Hello, hello everybody and welcome to another tutorial in camera and lens repair. And this time I would like to show, uh, I mean, maybe <laughs> try to show how one can fix their Nikomet FT. And this one that has a stock shutter and there are also some other details. Maybe there are some broken parts, I don't know yet. I haven't been fully into the camera. Um, I only took off the top cover and take a sneak peek. And I also uh, took off the, the leather here. And I will show you how. Um, we need some tools, uh, flathead screwdrivers. Uh, I use a 2mm and a 2.4mm. It doesn't have to be something special, but just good quality. Tweezer, it's very handy. Uh, dentist tool is absolutely great, especially with a spade here. And one of those very pointy, um, you can find them under, if you look at the dentist uh, tools or instruments. A bigger tweezer can also be very handy. And we need a, uh, some special tools which you can make yourself. This is a, um, I don't know what they call, two pin um, to unscrew the self timer uh, screw. I made this out of a uh, flathead screw bit which is 6.5 millimeter in width and then grind out so it has a, um, a gap so it can be used to unscrew the uh, the nut I mean the screw here and get the lever off and we will also need some rubber tools the famous from Japan hobby tool extremely good uh, some uh, compass which is old compasses I have filed and grind, so it can be used to actually repair cameras and lenses. A solder iron we also need, because there are two wires in here, we need to, maybe more, to unsolder. <coughs> uh, as you can see, I have already taken off the leather, the leather. Uh, and how to do that because it was actually very very it sits very tight so so to soften the uh, the leather around here at the camera um, around here to get it off and get the front plate uh, front yeah the mirror housing and the mount um, take the whole the whole thing off I need to simply uh, soften the leather here and for that I will use a hair blower I've already uh, softened part of it here so it should be quite easy but it takes some time which we can actually see here is that why I put the this uh, clock into the which I will do <coughs> I mean continue with that because it, it gives a um, feeling of how long does something take but let's go ahead and a dentist tool is really really handy maybe some other tools can be used Maybe some wooden um, thing could be very handy, um, but I prefer to use this tool. So <clears throat> we are close to the point, <clears throat> just need some more. Just need to take off the self timer lever, so uh, just need some tool. So 
I then found my my tool, which is actually a flathead uh, screw bits, uh, which I have filed and grind, so it fits perfect in the two small holes, not holes, but notches on the uh, screw here. So by unscrewing it counterclockwise, it is possible to get the lever off. <laughs> so So it is, yeah, there are actually two holes in here. So off with the, the lever, and there's also a spacer, it looks like there is a spacer in here. Must be something. Be no, it doesn't seem. <clears throat> no, it isn't. So we can just continue. So I need to heat up this. And now <clears throat> we actually can take off the leather here. So it looks like uh, difficult. And here we can see the the plate so we need to take that off and um, actually under that it's the uh, the point where you can come into the adjustment uh, for the uh, for the exposure wheel and uh, all those uh, gear wheel that in in here, um, we can take it off, and we can actually set a mark around here. In here, because then it will be a lot easier to see what's actually going on. What we actually can see here, if I turn the exposure wheel. We will probably come to one point, yeah, the end, and then it's a uh, thousand a second. I set it to, and then I can um, have an idea of how should the the gear wheel sit when it's uh, when I put them back in. But uh, of course, I need to take off the. The top cover and the probably the bottom cover I don't know but uh, we'll see so <clears throat> stay tuned <laughs> but for now we will um, just uh, look at I will take off those because ah not yet <laughs> I will take off this side because it will just fool around now to take off the top cover and with the accessory shoe, um, this is one of my friends. So um, let's see how it will go. Now <clears throat> we need to take off the the winder, um, and for that there's no holes here. So how to do that? Well, it's already loose, but if you <clears throat> want to take it off you simply have the thick part here of the rubber tools all together and then press and we'll see unscrew counterclockwise that's important it's not the other way around so do that and we will just do so So, all for that, nothing special, and the next part is unscrew this counterclockwise 
there are two holes and for that we will use the uh, the compass here just need to adjust it and then unscrew it so let's see how it will go we can just adjust it here tighten it and then mm, unscrew it so I look in the repair manual for this uh, FTN uh, which is maybe a little different from this one I don't know so uh, but yeah let's see how it will go there is a waved spacer here which need to be put in as you can see and then the winder lever uh, it can be a little tricky to take off so one have to press down here on the inner tube and then lift it up <coughs> as you can see here this uh, the inner tube here um, which is part of this half moon uh, part so that was actually that for that side we need to take off the eyepiece also with the rubber tool and it can, it can sit a bit tight So all for that. So and then <clears throat> of course we need to take off the nameplate which sits by two screws here and there. For that I will use my two millimeter flathead screwdriver. And remember, underneath here there are two small tubes which is spacers. Like we will see in a few seconds. Put a finger on the on the nameplate because uh, then you have better control of what you are doing. So there and out one screw. The next one, and then off the nameplate it looks like this and underneath there are two tiny spacers oh where did the other went okay it's here and it's this over here the other side now <clears throat> that was actually that so <clears throat> We need to take off the rewinder by opening the film door and then use one end of the uh, tweezer which is very handy to put in the gap here and at the same time um, flip up the I mean unfold the the handle here and simply do so and gently by pressing here unscrew it so it's not really much uh, power you need to to do it but but remember in here actually you maybe can see part of it here there is a spring kind of a leaf spring but we'll see when I unscrew the the uh, rewind and knob there are some parts here to take care of because when you turn it over one can see here there is a small pin here 
you can see this is a bit rusty so maybe there is uh, some issue in the camera but take care of how this sit <coughs> I mean it cannot sit wrong in this case because you cannot take it out here uh, either you cannot take it out the other way so it will just stay here but the pin could be loose in your camera now the next thing is this spring here oh there was a, also a spacer <clears throat> this spring here has to sit correct so when you put it back into the camera it has to sit like this so you put it down here so it sits something like that here just to, so you know it so <clears throat> the spacer that fall out here also needs some attention because it has to sit correct so maybe you can see here there is on the one side there is a flat side on the other side it's not completely flat but it's more more concave in a way and the concave uh, side has to sit towards the camera house so the flat side of course has to sit upwards like right now so take care of that when you screw it in again now <clears throat> we can close the film door and on top of it I can see somebody else has been in here some time ago we need another tool also a special one which I also have made myself and um, is a nine millimeter wrench top uh, wrench that is for nine millimeter uh, nuts and I have simply filed and grind two small pins on I mean one on each side so it can go over there this uh, retaining ring I just need a tool hold on and for that I need of course a uh, converter from the wrench until a screw bit so we can just put it in and in a very easy way <coughs> I could have used this one but you really have to be very careful uh, with this you can unscrew it maybe you have to use one with the flat ends uh, like this one and simply put it in here and in that way unscrew it I prefer to use this tool because it just works much better and safer so hold it on and then unscrew it so when it's loose you can just unscrew it without any problem now <clears throat> we have another screw actually the last one for, and to before we can take off the top cover uh, on this side here and then unscrew it so <clears throat> and now it's actually time to take off the top cover we can just lift it off by gently wiggle it a little and then flip it over so this is how it looks inside and you can see the two wires here which I need to unsolder <coughs> and 
for that you can use whatever solder you want this is just a small battery driven um, solder iron from Lidl <laughs> I bought it in Lidl and it's really really good so and you have to heat it up to to the green lit up <clears throat> you know, it doesn't take that long but here we go and simply unsolder it so it is there and the next one so mm -hmm. now come on so off it come and this is how it looks underneath nothing special so <clears throat> and now we actually look into more uh, parts in here <clears throat> there is one thing to mention uh, just so you know it this small pin you think okay where did that come from well it's actually sitting right here that is part of the shutter button so it sits right there <clears throat> so one have to take care of when you take off the the top cover I should actually have take off the top cover like this way um, because then it would have prevent the pin in here from just falling into the camera and maybe make some damage or so <clears throat> The problem with this camera is that the shutter does not work at all. It's completely stuck. Um, so what to do about it? Well, I would like to take off the mirror house and the wires here, uh, the meter maybe need to come off. I don't know yet. And of course the two, uh, the two sensors here. Um, CDS sensor for the light meter it's very simple so I can just unscrew the plate here uh, and unscrew it so there it is and then pop out the the two CDS sensors gently and the other one of course and then the the, the circuit board here is free now <clears throat> to be have a, a more safe work uh, precision I would like to unsolder the two wires here so we just need to make a little notes <laughs> how this uh, is actually put in so by scribe it here we can just so and so 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 now and there is something here black and we have more black and there is a yellow one here so this one and this one is actually connected to the the um, the light so and this one is yellow so that's it not uh, to do more about that but then I have my notes <clears throat> so if I'm stuck I can just uh, look at my notes and see okay how should it sit when it's correct 
because the repair manual does not tell this so uh, one has to take the notes anyway it would be it would be much better so you know what you're actually doing and this wire will come off easy way and then the yellow one is off so now we know how it should sit if we just we can just check this is how it sits so that's fine <coughs> away with that and there are probably more wires to actually uh, and solder I would guess without knowing it I will also take this off it's uh, attached to the to the resistance here and there is actually two wires okay well how could I know that it looks like the two wires here uh, for the the two black wires here go all the way over to the switch here that's turn on and off the light meter that's very simple and uh, maybe it's not necessary to do so much right now But we need to take off the front here, I mean the the lever here, and uh, just to mention, this has to be unscrewed counterclockwise, just so you know it. And for that, just need to change tools to this homemade 6.5 millimeter flathead. And then unscrew it. So off it comes without any problem. So that's fine. Put it somewhere where you where you can find it. <clears throat> and also the lever here has to come off one can actually lift it up a little with a dentist tool it will make it more handy so <clears throat> and now I have since I already have take off this uh, with my hair dryer <clears throat> And put that aside <clears throat> there is a plate in here which is cover some gear wheels <clears throat> like you can see here so if I turn the exposure wheel uh, it's right now on 1000 a second oh come on there you can see at the dot so I can just turn it and at the same time the gear wheel in here will move all the way over to B so but the repair manual does not really tell much about it so I will just set it to something 1000 a second and let it stay there I'm not quite sure if the uh, <clears throat> if the light meter has to come off um, or it can stay. I mean, it sit by two screws, so maybe we'll take it off. Um, it sit by two screws, one there and there. So before take off the 
the uh, the front section here I would think yeah I would think I will just lift off the the light meter and see how it should I mean how it looks underneath The screws are brass, so it's, it's non-magnetic. It will be quite interesting to see what's actually the issue in here. Uh, now the light meter should it cannot just come off. I tried uh, earlier, but it can be loose a little, as you can see. So probably, yeah, maybe the repair manual does not tell much about it. So how should it come off? Yeah. Maybe this one has to come off. I don't know. Let's have a look inside here. It looks like it's screwed in. So I will just simply try to unscrew it. This part here, the rewinder, and see how it will go. So using my old uh, compass here. I would guess it will be the the best idea to do. So there. <clears throat> wow, it sits tight. Uh, could it be that it is counterclock? I mean, clockwise to unscrew. Well, let's see. Sometimes you can see it on the thread. Or maybe they have used some thread lock. It could also be. So let's see if we can uh, soften the thread lock by using some nail polish remover. And hopefully get it. Uh, soften and by using some mm, cutting buds if I can get them here they are <laughs> and just close it it's better not to make any damage And then try to add this stuff around here and let it suck in. Not too much. It will just need to to soften the thread lock, not damage the whole thing. <laughs> I think it will be enough. So I think it will be okay. And then let's try to see if it's possible. Maybe I should just put in the one screw uh, that holds the light meter so it will not just fall out. So so it is. So now we are safe. And then we can just try again.
they probably have something special tool to do this at, in the repair shops. Uh, I would guess so. It's really tight. Wow, sits tight. Now, <clears throat> let's just see if we can. Uh, not good. Okay, try another solution. Hold on. I think this tool, a wire cutter, will be fine to do that. Uh, so let's see, and it has two good ends. So it would probably be fine then have a good grip and so it's like that you just need to to loosen it and then you can unscrew it fine okay that's it fine very good and then the light meter should come off uh, as I see it Hopefully. So there. And then it should be possible to lift out. <coughs> Maybe there are more things to do about it. Or maybe it is so. Just a guess. Because the repair manual does not tell that. So if one loses the screws on the front here, it should be possible to just take out the whole front. So I will try to do that. This so stays on thousand a second. And then we unscrew the front. Whew. Maybe I should make some marks here. So now I have an idea of where a thousand a second is uh, as I see it when I take off the the mirror house the front um, there will be a gear wheel that is connected to the inside uh, escape I mean not escapement the speed gear or something down here I have no idea about the the uh, wires or the string for the uh, for the aperture, which when we use this, uh, no, it's only the it's only the shutter in here, the the wheel down here. You probably can see. I know it's difficult to see. Um, <clears throat> down here there are some uh, wheels with some string that is connected to the exposure wheel okay one thousand a second and then it should come off let's see <laughs> very very interesting the screws has to sit the same place as I see it <laughs> because then they are may maybe different lengths yeah it is no it's the same length so no problem 
over that. It was actually loose. Hmm. Well, and then on the other side here, there. It's the same length. So all screws are actually the same. It's not a problem. So, and now something interesting. If I gently, very gently, I don't think there is any more screws here. Uh, doesn't seem to be. No, it will just, it will come off all in one piece. So, <clears throat> and I don't think the wires will be a problem, except the brown one here, just have it out here. And the, those wire here, the black one and the yellow one. I think they will just stay in the body. So if I lift it off, I think the light meter should stay there. Or maybe one just, um, hold on a second. There's something with the bottom part, which I need to take off. So unscrew. The battery is dead in the camera, so there is no problem with that. It will just fall out. So, and then lift it off. And the battery is empty. So now we have a better view of what's actually going on and there was something uh, no I think it will just come off in one single section so if I push out this little here doesn't seem that there is any loose parts So maybe this wheel here, uh, it cannot be taken out, so how do we do that? There isn't any. Uh -huh. There's something here. <coughs> That actually need to be done. The self timer. No, it, it's not that is the problem. So the top cover, as I see it, maybe it's so when it's loose a little, the light meter can come out. Ah, okay, here we come. So this is a light meter. Take care of that. And then uh, the, f okay, there is something here. So 
So, here we are. And there is actually a wire in here. So this is how it looks inside. Interesting. First time I see a FT inside and there's a wire here that is connected to the the resistance here. So I should have actually unsolder it it's not a big problem i can just do it now um, because then the mirror house will be free so there okay it's it's solder to the other side of the resistance as you can see here yeah somebody has been into the camera before me maybe some years ago <laughs> I don't know so <sighs> interesting and it will be interesting to see what actually uh, the shutter is uh, fully stopped so let's see how it will go and then it should be on soldering hopefully yeah so it is there just put those two well it's not a problem so I would say that the light meter should be taken off so And simply unsolder it. If it's possible to do, yeah. So now the light meter is free. So, fine. All for that. And then we look actually into the body itself so what could be the problem here since you can see the shutter is actually not fully it has not make the full turn so what can be maybe I will just take the mirror housing away and then put on a the advanced lever and try to advance the camera and so put on the the wave spring and the part here the retaining knot and so so what will happen We can see here it's not really good okay this part looks like it's really uh, bent no not really but it's not possible to push the the shutter button itself so let's see here No, nothing will happen and it's not really a problem down here uh, maybe it's over here so now if I push 
this pin over here, push it down, I can actually press down the the shutter button. So it seems like there is something stuck somewhere. And it's not possible to wind the camera. There could be some some parts in here that is uh, stuck a little. So if I press down here, press down here. And then no, because the this part in here has to be unlocked. So so something is. I mean, there's some kind of life in here. So so if I wind the camera. Um, press the shutter button and probably wind the shutter, uh, it will not go. All the way. So it should come all the way over. This part here should come all the way over here. It's part of the dented uh, piece of metal under under the cover here but uh, it will not really work so if I wind the camera maybe it's if I do so it will not fully wind it Yeah, I just need to look at it. Hold on. Okay, <clears throat> I've looked into more of this uh, of the details about the um, the advance, and it looks like there is one or two gear reels in here that is really stuck because they will never ever move. So it could probably be the easy with this camera, but I will take off the uh, the counter and the part of the advance um, to see if there is anything to see, which I hope. So <clears throat> as I see it, there is one screw here, there, and there. And then maybe needs needs a 2.4 millimeter screwdriver. Oh, mm, no, it shouldn't be a problem. I think we will just take this off here and here and the last one here. This screw here. It's not really that good described in the repair manual, so uh, let's see what's going on. I think I need to. Do I have a tweezer here to take out this part? those two parts here which looks like something as I said in the beginning they it seems like there is something rusty in here so maybe it's the issue with actually rust so you take out the 
counterpart. Which is so. <clears throat> oh, this is the one that actually measure is it so yeah I guess it will count each time there and so there can it just do something Okay, the wheel can actually move. Okay. <clears throat> now. Okay. Yeah, look what happened in here. It seems like there is a lot of dirt. Especially on the gear wheels here. They're really full of dirt. And that could actually be. Get the. The small gear wheel to actually get stuck you probably can see this area here interesting wow it's fully dirty shit <clears throat> and it could also be oh wow it's really stuck so if i can hopefully if I can get the, this part is not a problem. I think I can. What can I do about it? Or not. Okay, if I take off the part here, but before doing so, this piece here, um, and it doesn't really do anything well. Uh, I'll just make a mark here so I know exactly where it sits before I actually unscrew that part. So, make a scratch and uh, it will hopefully be a good scratch so you can see where parts sit. Yeah, it's fine. So I think if I can take off this part here, I can actually uh, move the this lever here out, and in that way get the advance mechanism out. Because I think it's the problem uh, actually in there. Do a little screw, where do you went? Okay, well, it's over here. Put it somewhere. And <clears throat> maybe it's better to set a mark here on the side. So that I actually can see it. I think it should be fine. And then take out this part here. Whoa, <laughs> magnetic. So now it should be possible to turn this and hopefully get into the advance mechanism part of it. That seems like the problem is maybe water or something that gets the thing rusty. But uh, what if I see it's completely stuck. 
So how about before taking off the parts, I would say that I need to set a mark here because it will probably be necessary to see where part the, the gear wheel is connected. So it must be fine. I have no idea about the other. Um, so let's get it off. I don't think there should be any thing that needs some okay something is actually moving in a way so if we turn this it's actually the only thing that can turn but nothing will happen so <clears throat> Can I just get rid of this? This arm here looks. Ah, okay, yeah. Spring is winded up down here. Probably difficult to see. Uh, down here, the spring, the other end is up here. So if I can lift up this, the spring will probably follow. A good dented tweezer will be fine. And it will turn half a turn. So it's not a problem. So with this part and lift up this spring so now we have better access to the actual winding gear and hopefully there are three screws there's one here down here there and there without knowing it I would say that um, well I don't know if it's a problem or so no I think we just take it out so there it's the upper part of the winding gear so I would guess there is something underneath. Maybe this will also come off. But let's see if what's happened when I unscrew this. <laughs> so and what's happened here? Yeah, I would think that the, uh, the screw in here would also need to come off. Thin one. Hmm. Nah, difficult to get off. <clears throat> I think it is really rusty in here. I think I will just put in the three screws be in here uh, because then it would be easier to unscrew this screw. So okay, hey 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 hey, don't mix the screws.
there. I mean, the rest of the camera is actually looking fine. If we just look at how old it is. So, but I would like to actually fix this camera. It would be a great thing. So, now I need some other tools, so hang on. I think we'll just need some nail polish remover and to get the, to unscrew the, uh, the bottom screw down here. So let's see. What? So. It should soften the thread lock or whatever they have used here. I have no idea. So, and <laughs> is it counterclockwise or is it? I would say it's clockwise. No. Whew. Not easy. Well, I just take a break. Okay. Um, I think I will just uh, make a second part. So um, to to actually. I need some time to actually figure out this before I um, continue. So, uh, well, there will be a second part. So, see you sooner.